to witch on the holy night. Woo! Uh, what, what were we doing? What were we doing um, last time? I think the last uh, last time we were still on like the. Oh right, uh, uh, Sojuro just came back to the mansion. I think from his cleaning. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think so too. From I his community service. His <laughs> yeah, community cry. service. His community service. Oh, right! Because there was that weird kid that we thought maybe was Mario, but there's absolutely no fucking way it's Mario. There's no way it's Mario, dude. Yeah. What if it is Mario? It's him, then Mario! He's a, then he's a homunculus, which I wouldn't be surprised by. <laughs> so. He looks 12, so... <laughs> yeah, and so does... And so does, so does, so does Ilya. Ilya. <laughs> He'd be like 20 or 30 by the time of Tsukihime, so he would be a homunculus. Who knows? Nobody. Anyways, let's go. Boop. It's time. It's time. Oh, right. I forgot he that immediately he looks like Mario. He walked in on he walked on on Alco and um. Alice having a conversation and they're just ignoring him right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> All this time, we'd been preoccupied by a decoy. No doubt also a part of their plan. Then while we're distracted, they crept in and stole another one. The fight against this mage has only just begun. This fucking bitch! <laughs> <laughs> the situation was growing more dire by the day. Until only a couple of days ago, the enemy had limited themselves to small skirmishes, but now they had shifted to a full on offensive. Alko had two major bounded fields she used for defense. One, the larger of the two, was placed around Misaki City to detect magical energy and magecraft. This one, this was used to observe and, moni and monitor visitors from outside the city, and was initially set up by Aozaki's ancestors, the administrators of this territory, and had no way to be removed. The other was set up to energize and manage ley lines from within the territory. The five sigils carved into the earth made up a standard square type array, protecting all that lay within its bounds. After some manipulation of the mana flow, the power within was directed to accumulate at the Kuanji estate. That is to say, the bounded field existed to monopolize the magical energy within Misaki City. There were five sigils in total, with, with the Kuanji estate located in the center. So, wait. How is that? It, how is it in the center if it's up on the hill? How, how is it in the center if it's up on the hill? Does it also just include all the trees and stuff? That is a I, I, that is a big I, square then. <laughs> that is a very big square. It is a sizable square. Like, well, does that mean that Misaki City is like a big square, and then like the mountain is like in the center of the whole city? I guess so. I mean, it it makes sense <laughs> if it were that large because they'd want. To To both monitor the city, but also the surrounding, but also the immediate surrounding area of, uh, around the Kuanji man Mansion, mm -hmm. because like you know, obviously, they're not gonna, they might not even come from the city. Um, especially if if they're coming towards the mansion, they would like they they'd probably be close enough that like the mansion would need to be the center you know mm -hmm. so like e even then sometimes even then they might not even like need to cover the entire city 
Granted, it, it might just also be a big square. Like a very sizable square. It's just a big, big square. Maybe if it encompasses... The of the land is just taken up by the mountain. And they're at the center of the entire area. Maybe. It's just not the center of the mountain. More so the center of the area. Maybe. Still that makes sense, though. The but entire mountain. It's a, yeah, it's a very big mountain. It's a very big mountain. Very big square. Very big... Uh... This, this, this square is definitely going over the city. Oh, yeah, more, for sure. It's, it's overtaking more than just the city, definitely. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anyways... <laughs> if all five sigils were forcibly removed, Alco's jurisdiction over this territory would be in title only. Without the power of the land to back them up, they would be forced to fight back against their invaders on equal ground, with only their own innate abilities to protect them. Wait, so, so, so the, um, so the five sigils are like each of the corners of the square, mm -hmm. and then the Kulonji is state being the center with yes. its own sigil, I'm guessing. I would imagine. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> That is not a square. To, uh, if that makes it, <laughs> that's a pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. I think I think it's like a four corners, and then they all emerge mm. like a like a pyramid. Yeah, like a pyramid, more than a square, or at least it's square in shape. It, it's square in like it's shape, square, but like it's a square in a top-down view. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We know geometry. Reason. Exactly. <laughs> the only reason Alice and the inexperienced Alco were able to def defend this territory so far was because of these two fields. The dragnet that notified Aozaki of any threats was also her lifeline. Her lifeline, you lifeline? say? Ayo. 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 Is that a Tsukihime reference? Is that Seimei-san? Hey, yo. Miss the guys of death perception? What? Oh. <laughs> is, that, is that how she knows what they are? <gasps> La gasp. That's definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely <What's> not. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles. But this time, the energy had somehow slipped through the cracks and was running rampant. This was what the girls had to face up to. Either way, it's just a matter of time at this point. Once all the sigils are destroyed, this mansion will be our last stronghold of defense. Are you okay with that, Aoko? Of fucking course I'm not. <laughs> Like you said, it's only a matter of time before the sigils are destroyed. Our best chance would be to find the right out, but it's, but it's not exactly a necessity. They can't do this for all I care. As long as you're here, the mansion itself shouldn't be a problem to defend. If they come to the other side, they'll come to you. And if they do, then they're, ma then they're marching to their own demise. I mean, have you heard of that thing called a grill? I hear they're very effective. <laughs> yeah. Very effective against some wizards. Not mages, what but wizards. What else is there to worry about? <laughs> what else uh, is there to worry about? Uh, imagine. Imagine being a mage who uses a gun. Truly. <laughs> Can you imagine? What a weirdo that guy would be. <laughs> imagine being a guy named Kiritsugu. Imagine being a guy named Kiritsugu Emiya. Imagine having a gun. <laughs> imagine, imagine having a gun that's filled with human fingers. <laughs> oh, that guy must be a real weirdo. Mm, so weird. Probably sleeps in a crypt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tight moon references galore. That's our job. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. So, <laughs> ne. 
敵が一人だけならその時は鏡の範囲をここに集中させて戦場にすればいい私たちにとってその方が有利だったわまあまあまあまあまあまあまあまあ The surface of the mirror rippled like water. The gasp. Dead Apostle Alice? <laughs> Shovel <Shall we laughs> Lucinda opens up book. Oh my god. Can't see have you guys seen Ella Enchanted? I have not. Total, to, we need to put that on the, on the movie list because Ella Enchanted <laughs> is so good. It's so funny. I love Anne Hathaway. Alright. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Don't take <clears throat> The mirror was another protector of Basaki City, separate from Aozaki's bounded field. More accurately, it was a ploy that existed only to protect Alice Kawanji rather than Basaki City itself. It generated a thick fog and acted as an, in an initiation to any visitors. Or in in invitation. Invitation, yeah. Uh, <laughs> drawing them in to its Bored game like world. No. No. It can't be. Not Mario Party. Mario Party! <laughs> no. <laughs> Sends them all to Mario Party. No. <laughs> Sends them all to go. specifically to, like, to suspend. Sends them specifically to the one, to, like, the game board that's made entirely out of, like, sweets and cake. Oh, good lord. It's a reality it's like... Marvel. Sends you to Mario Party. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's a reality that mirror. That man's Mario Party 5. I can't remember its name. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, I'm Daisy. <laughs> oh, please. No, no. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alco. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alco. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's cursed. Hello, I'm Alice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> fun here. We have fun here. We have fun here. Maybe a little too much. We just, we just have a lot of laughs. <laughs> Fuck off, Janet. I'm not going to your stupid fucking baby shower. <laughs> oh, anyways. <clears throat> Alice referred to it only as the mirror. That's freaking ominous. Okay, jeez. <laughs> but really, its name is Jeff. <laughs> But it, it was known to her friends, she has friends, as the Mirror of Slumber. Surprised. She has friends? She has friends. She has friends? I thought she had people she knew. Yeah. I hesitate right? to call them even acquaintances. Yeah, right? <laughs> Your mirror on the table. She has like... Who's the something something fable? She has like, a, like an equal relationship with like, uh, with Aoko. And like forty-five uh, percent towards Sojiro. <laughs> maybe a ch maybe thirty-five it's if almost, I'm being a little like, bit more. It's like a almost a fifty-fifty split. <laughs> yes. Did someone just fucking die? I heard I heard a bang, and I'm like, if someone fucking fell down, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, oh no. I'm sure they're alive. I'm sure everything's fine. Probably. Hopefully. That's my favorite. That's my favorite part about being on the main floor. You can hear everyone walking everywhere. Oh boy. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> this was a magecraft that Alice Kwanji wielded. And now they're rummaging around in the bathroom. <laughs> I yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> Heard it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's enjoying this. <clears throat> Within the rippling surface of the mirror, an image of a castle began to form, and also a lush forest, a field, and a river. Alco sta- Alco st That is stared, okay. Yes. I kept trying to read it as started, and I was like, that there's not a second T there? Um, and also everything's in the incorrect order, so. Fair. Alco 
stared at the mirror in silence. Before suddenly jumping to her feet off the sofa. Dive into the mirror. <laughs> now that that's all decided, we can go back to actually doing stuff. <laughs> you just dive into the mirror. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you painting? Pagecraft 2, we can too. <laughs> we have fun here. King Boo silhouette, fade to black. Oh my god. That's, 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 what, that's, the, that's the main antagonist, it's just Blue's Clues. King Boo. Blue's Clues. <laughs> Not King Blue. <laughs> King Blue is uh King Blue is King Blue's clues. I see. Nah, King King Boo is uh is Flat Snark. Yeah. Flat <laughs> Snark. We've already defeated him. <laughs> but someone rose into his place. The clues of Blue. Flat Sands. <laughs> it's Flat Sands. <laughs> I'm going out, Alice. We can't do anything until we have eyes on the, on the ground. Alice let out a tired sigh in response to Alko's determination, then gave the mirror a gentle caress. Pat, pat. Pat, pat. Pat, pat. Oh. The sound of dripping water filled the room. I wish I could do that, like, like that little, like, bloink sound people can Oh, do. yeah. Like the, like, where they, like, flick their throat or whatever. Yeah, no, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, we all know what we're talking about, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Well, Google it. Um, <laughs> the, mirror, <laughs> the mirror began to consume the table in the thick fog with a single caress from Alice. Why have we used the word caress more than once? Caress the mirror. If we're visiting each other, if we're visiting each sigil, we definitely won't be back until morning. Then I won't be home in no time. Oh, right. I meant to ask, is this the proper way to do a fire pentagram banishment? A fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> Alko traced a shape in the air with her fingers. She mimed a star shape, starting from the top, moving down to the right, from there to the upper left, and so on. Oh, okay, I see. Then I I did it like twice. <laughs> to the top, moving down to the right, the top, maybe upper left. Drop. Gotcha. <laughs> It's about or sorry, bleh. It's about <laughs> time you learned something other than how to break things, Alco. You are not limp biscuit. <laughs> she really does mostly use her magic her magecraft to, to break just things. break things. <laughs> yeah. She learned the power is uh, destruction. Yep. It, the her magecraft is described as bullets. She's yeah. a gun. <laughs> she is a walking gun. She's a gun. Alice sat up from the sofa, letting out a heavy sigh. <gasps> they both took their coats from their hangers and left the drawing room. I love how, how Alko looked, like, so, like, <laughs> Well, excuse me. I guess I need to study some more on, on top of all of the studying I already do. Remember that charm I pulled off just the other day? What charm? That simple mesmerize. You know, the one you taught me. Light and frail, nimble and quick. Tick-tock, tick-tock. There's no time to waste. That one. 
Punto. Are you being serious right now? Yes, I'm serious. You can ask Sotaro later if you don't believe me. Hey, hey, y'all, don't don't bring me into this. <laughs> don't bring this. I might still be standing here, but I did nothing. I promise. Alice swallowed her words, clearly displeased. She likely stopped herself in time to realize that it was not worth the effort to take issue with it. Damn. <laughs> On the topic, what will he do while we're away? Run. He'll be fine. As long as he doesn't try to go into the West Wing or anything like that, there shouldn't be any Im immediate threat to him. <laughs> what what is what is in the West Wing that should know. be in immediate a rose. to his if he doesn't a rose. A rose. It's forbidden. It's forbidden. Hey, hey it's forbidden. It's forbidden. It's though. forbidden. It is forbidden. <sighs> I was gonna make a an appropriate joke, but then I was like, nah. Like what's he gonna do all over way? Uh you don't wanna know. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> DM. DM. <laughs> Alga responded hastily as she opened the door to the foyer. As soon as she did, just as quickly as Alice's doubts had gotten stuck in her throat, Alga suddenly froze, unable to speak. She got That's muted. Not great. Wait, wait. What? Oh, wait. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. what? For a moment, Alko wasn't sure who was standing before her. She could only stare at the glinting rays of sunlight creeping into the room as she reeled from the shock. Ayo, short, shirtless Sojuro? Shirtless <laughs> Sojuro. Her mind was completely blank. It was as if she had just woken up from a nap. Or a jack-in-the-box had just opened in her face. Sojiro was probably the only person who truly knew how long that dumbfounded silence went on. He's just like... Looking, looking to the side. Like to the other side. Points at himself, confused. <laughs> just like a, just lets it out a little... Eh? Eh? Me? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Uh, what the hell are you doing standing there like that? Aku had finally found her voice. What? I'm changing clothes. What happened to your arms, baby? A bear attack. Who did that to you? A bear attack. You know, it probably is a bear, not gonna lie. <laughs> Hold on. Bro is ripped. He is. Man is shredded. <laughs> Absolutely shredded. He's living in the dude mountains. Is, dude is yoked. <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, do you see those muscles, like that definition, like just on like leading into the bag down the thing? Like, that is not a oh. silly little dude. That is not a silly little guy. That is a silly little man. He's <laughs> <laughs> a full fledged. Uh, that is a silly little person. egg yolk of a man. An absolute <laughs> unit of a man. Look at him. Look at him. He's so cute. Big. His, his, head, his head does not fit the rest of his body. <laughs> Probably because we're at, looking at him at a very awkward angle, to be fair. Fair, yeah. I, Why I am more under convinced. the bandage? I am much more Good convinced. Good question. What are under the bandages? <laughs> I am definitely much more convinced that he's a Frankenstein creature. This body is <laughs> not his. His head is just on it. You know, what's, Keith, I know what some of the bandages. Hmm? Are under the bandages. An embarrassing photo of SpongeBob at the Christmas party. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Anyways, what? I'm just changing clothes. 
Sojuro's response was matter of fact. He offered no explanation as to why he was changing the foyer and not the bathroom. <laughs> uh, but he's just a silly little yoked lad, so we'll never change Sojuro. Never change. I mean, obviously change clothes, but <laughs> <laughs> obviously finish changing clothes. I hope you have changed your pants because I don't think anyone wants to see what kind of tidy whities you're wearing. True. Even if he so. was about to take off his pants, I. <laughs> Uh, 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 um, <clears throat> Elko was too shocked to read him the right act. <laughs> Sajiro was putting the shirt on after presumably just getting out from the bath. <laughs> this needs to be the thumbnail. Okay. <laughs> There are no, you know there are That's no fair. thoughts behind those eyes. <laughs> He's just like, ha. Huh. No thoughts, only muscle. No thoughts, <laughs> only trauma from bear attack. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't even know if that's what that's from. You, 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 you get it. The thing is, the thing is, is that it's a very awkward place, right? You would think if he got attacked by a bear, I mean, sure, putting up your arm like that to get scratched would be, like, a good presume. But if it's a bear attack, he probably would have had more scratches. To only come away with something on your forearm is, one, fucking lucky. Wolf? Two, cougar? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm not thinking, uh, well, it can't be a wolf because this is Japan. Wolves? There are no, there yeah. are no. True, are no true, Japan true, animals. true. Mountain right. lions exist, though. Mountain lions. Mountain lions do, yeah. Fox? I don't know. I mean, to be fair, it could have been a deer. Deer are actually kind of vicious. Do deer yeah, are vicious, oh, yeah. true. Yeah, he could have been and stabbed I feel like by he deer. Mentioned, I feel like, I'll have to look back, but I feel like he mentioned like having a dream about something with an animal in the mountains. Right. Like you fought an animal or something like that. Maybe, but like I just remember him with animals in a dream. Yeah, the dream yeah. sequence where there was a giant Alco. Yes. Maybe? I don't remember. I mean, yes, there was that dream sequence, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to look back at it. It'll be fine. Everything shall be explained, maybe. Yeah. His neck was wrapped in bandages, and he was completely shirtless. No, really? <laughs> His hair was Black. wet, but his skin wasn't glistening from the steam of hot water. He must have washed himself with nothing more than cold water. Lex, my guy. Though shocked as to why anyone would do such a thing in the cold weather, she let it slide. The source of her silence, stu her silent stupor, was simply his body. The body. <laughs> I have no words. I'm just going to click down. <laughs> oh wait, no, this should be this should be the thumbnail. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. this this is the Saidochesto. Saidochesto <laughs> Sweet Jiminy Christmas. Definitely Christmas for Alco. <laughs> you I guess it? have to go get I guess they'll have to get KFC for dinner. <laughs> since that is the traditional Christmas meal in Japan. Is that actually? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> like actually, Just, yeah. Like interesting. They they sell Christmas buckets in Japan. Wow, interesting. Christmas family buckets, yeah. I forget <laughs> how it happened. I believe it was some kind of campaign that uh, KFC had, and also they were open on Christmas mm -hmm. in Japan. So I think it was like a campaign mixed with that, and that people were just like they just it's Christmas fried chicken. <laughs> so until now, she'd only seen him as harmless. Without his clothing to hide him, however, he was more fit than she'd imagined. This man works, like, four different jobs and has to lift a bunch of shit and runs. Right. 
and he told you he was good at running. And you <laughs> think he doesn't have like at least a little bit of bulk to him? <laughs> Damn. If that's not undermining your opponent, I don't know what is. It's a mage. Imagine, imagine this is what Kishi looks like under under his clothes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he he just wears a bunch of like sweatshirts and then he takes it off and it's just boom, Sojuro. <laughs> For a rough mountain upbringing, where one's body and strength meant survival, perhaps he was even a bit underdeveloped. What? No. He could be bulkier. He could turn into Napoleon. <laughs> Let's face it, Joshua's probably similar to this. He looks brawny, but oh, yeah, no, I can he's probably bulky. It. Yeah, this is what Estelle saw. <laughs> <laughs> This is exactly what Estelle saw when she accidentally walked in on uh, on him in the bath. <laughs> that was before we knew me, because that was for our gap see. Right. <laughs> that was before you knew me. It's totally wild. <laughs> okay, I need to tell you this, because I think this is really funny. My grandmother just sent me a picture of myself. Mm -hmm. Of me. And just goes, my beautiful granddaughter. Aww. <laughs> Which That's is a adorable. picture of me. And I'm just like, thanks, Nana. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> like, don't get this is my this is my mom's mom. So not not my dad's mom. Um uh... so for her to just send me a random picture of myself, just that just means she wants to hang out, but that also means that she just wants someone to feed into her narcissism. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> we love grandparents. It's not, the... okay. it's not the one that I like. Okay, not the one you like. It's not my marine grandmother that I love dearly. Anyways. Yeah. And on top of that... Are those... scars? I'll go really checking them out, huh? Elko asked cautiously. Sojuro followed her gaze. Eh? Wait. Oh. He had something that looked like a burn scar on his arm. Burn? Burn? Will you keep fire? Will you keep okay. fire? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A little early for that. A little early. It was random in appearance, nothing like Alko's magic crest with its ordered pattern. Oh, Koreka. Oh, please. A long time ago, I was attacked by a pack of wild dogs. They bit me. It's a miracle I'm even still alive. So, if anything, I'm fond of the scar. So is dogs. Are... Okay. Wait, dogs. Those are dogs, and what'd she say was a burn scar? Mm. Who knows? He could be please, lying. Please Hell don't tell hounds. me. He... <laughs> Hell hounds. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe he Among... was just really extreme and just got like a hot iron and seared it up because he didn't want infections. You know, I could see him doing that. Chad. <laughs> Absolute Chad. A long time ago. He must be talking about when he was a child. Though his life was saved, it was apparent that he hadn't been able to receive proper treatment deep in the mountains where he lived. Those scars are proof of that. Considering it had happened so many years ago, it was likely they would never fade. Engraft. If only for an instant, Alko thought the wild scars left on his skin suited his lean body perfectly. That's a sentence. <laughs> so she likes those. So this is her type. Okay, that's her type. Interesting. I think Sojiro is everyone's type. <laughs> fair. Fair, honestly. I know it's not pleasant to look at. I should have just changed in my own room. Why didn't you do that then? Good question. Shh. Why didn't you do that? <laughs> he's, he's being a baby. Sojuro sounded slightly ashamed as he put on his shirt, 
looking at Alko standing there in cold silence. The two girls had no response. Oh, right. Alice is there. <laughs> yeah. Just vibing. Sojiro headed for the stairs to go back to his room. Just, just wait, Sojiro. Wait a second, Sojiro. Hmm? Hmm? Sojiro stopped and turned around. Take your shirt uh, off again. Uh, <laughs> um... So, how do I say this? Aku looked away awkwardly, apparently not knowing why she had stopped herself. Stopped him herself. He wants to take his shirt off again. Huh? This ain't like you, Aozaki. You're not acting strange. Did you get a fever or something? I bet neither of you have gotten enough sleep since all that, have you? He was, of course, referring to the final exams. For Sojiro, from Sojiro's perspective, the amount of work Alko put in seemed strange. I, I don't have a fever! That's not what this is about! I just want to know why the hell you're changing clothes here! Aku was doing her best to keep up appearances. Alice is just watching all this from the sidelines, by the way. Yeah, why she just, died? She takes a mirror and pulls out some popcorn. <laughs> the bird lands on her shoulder. She feeds it some popcorn. <laughs> oh, ye. But... For some reason, Sojiro wasn't hesitant to say too much more. Sojiro was hesitant to say much more. Yeah. So, well, this ain't easy to say. But you need to take care of your underwear better. I don't know whose it is, though. Oh, what? no. He's killed himself. What? Blink, 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 blink. blink. <laughs> what? <laughs> he has so, killed himself. So, Sojo, what, what did you touch? Excuse me? Sojo, Excuse me? what have you seen and what did you touch? Oh no. Alice, who had been completely silent behind Alco, couldn't resist responding to that statement. Uh oh, it's hers. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Although, <laughs> she, although she hadn't wanted to get involved, this was something she couldn't ignore. I I must point out it was most definitely Alco. Damn! <laughs> Shifting the blame. Shifting the blame. I see how it is. She's not even mad at him. She just, she just doesn't want to be blamed. <laughs> yep. She's like, I am good. Throw her under the bus. Also, she has no nose. <laughs> she has lost. She has lost her nose. This is so good. This is A plus scene. <laughs> Alice's response was quick and to the point. I must have been in charge of all. I may be in charge of. I might be in charge of the laundry, but. Ago seemed like she was just holding back on getting critical. On going critical. Anyway, I really had to get dressed, or I'm gonna be late before work. Sensing that those two were probably about to get into an argument, Sojiro took his chance to leave. Hey, <laughs> yeah, later. <laughs> Bye. And with that, Sojiro briskly left the scene. Alice. Alice? I'll go clean up. Alice calmly walked into the bathroom. What did that mean? A few minutes later, just as the two were about to head out and fulfill their duties as mages, Alk remembered something she wanted to ask. So, Alice, do you think those scar do you think those scars were 
あれは傷跡じゃないわ。I don't think so. だって、あんなにも誇らしいもん。He seems so proud, after all.Uncle agreed. What had impressed her the most about those scars were how he treated them simply as a part of his past, absent of any regret. Uncle wouldn't have gone so far as to say he was proud, but it seemed her instincts had been correct. That, and one more thing. One thing is clear, though. So, there's a. I was the only one who was pleasantly surprised at what, at what I saw. Alice? As what I saw. Was I, Alice? They both were checking him out. <laughs> of course. No, I don't know why, but were. given Alice's personality, I can't help but picture her just suddenly materializing a camera out of nowhere during that. She, like, subtly coughs and takes a picture with her phone. Yes. Just <laughs> click. <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. you, know what, you know exactly what anime cliche comes to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, she's not shot, very good at it. She shot. takes multiple pictures and then coughs. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and so George just doesn't question. He's just like, okay, sure. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Algo smiled wryly at Alice, like a child who knew they were going... That they were doing something they shouldn't with their friend. New Alice portrait. She's adorable. Look at her. I, I love it. Look, I, I don't. I haven't been around for a lot of Witch on the Holy Night, but every time I see Alice, I love her. Even though all <laughs> her costumes are amazing. Fair. I think I. I think also I she appears to be one of my more favorite archetypes, and I'll say that much. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, Kundaris are. Last time, yeah. But... Kundaris are perfect. <laughs> I know I said this last time, but like, whenever her eyes go wide, I think she looks more her age. Oh yeah, for sure. Because her her eyes are always like half lidded, and mm -hmm. she's always so serious. But I think when her eyes like are a little wider, like she looks more her age. Right, for sure. Alice was trying to ignore her as best she could. <laughs> She looked away without saying a word. Alko let out a satisfied snicker and began walking towards the front door. <laughs> she probably started at the park, right? She was talking about the local park in the sake. No, we're talking about the park in Fuyuki, of course. No, yeah, yeah, the park in Fuyuki. <laughs> the place and then it's gonna set on they... fire. <laughs> <laughs> the place where they had run into the enemy puppets, and, of course, where their involvement with Sojiro had begun. Oh, Frank died. Oh, no! I can't believe it. No more Frank. He's dead. Deleted. Early, Extinct. early the next morning. It was five o'clock in the morning. Most people were still in their beds, sleeping. Although some 24-hour convenience stores had opened last year, Misaki Town was still very much living in the good old days of the early 80s. Even the tofu shop in the shopping district, known for opening earlier than anywhere else, didn't open until six. But this was the, la the but this was the late eighties, during the latter half of Japan's bubble economy. It was a time where metropolitan areas never slept. Those in the countryside, however, re remained in the past. The homes were blanketed in silence, the streets were empty of commuters, and not a single automobile could be heard. The sun was just barely peeking over the horizon. The town still the town would still be asleep for at least an hour longer before it began waking up.
It was during this time that someone stepped onto the Kuanji estate. Oh. Huh? Oh, it's oh, Sojiro. thank God. <laughs> Sojiro was working the late shift during winter vacation and had just come home. He moved quietly through the drawing room so he wouldn't wake up Alice or, or Alco out Alice, who were presumably still asleep. I don't think they've come home. They're probably not home yet. They said it would take like the whole night, so it probably it probably will. <laughs> the Kuanji estate had a few established rules. One of those rules forbade more <laughs> forbade more Japanese tea. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I good question. Why ja why not? <laughs> oh, this rule this new rule had only came into effect 3 days prior when he was using the tea and he made it like shit apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fair, I guess. I suppose doing my boy dirty like that. He's just trying to be nice. Let my boy just try to be nice. <laughs> Please. <laughs> it was proposed after Alice saw Sojiro drinking green tea in the kitchen after after dinner one night. Good lord. Uh, um. Oh. <laughs> eh. The absolute, they look like they've come across a body. <laughs> Looking back on it, the decision had been made rather abruptly. That single gasp of surprise was all Alice said. She, ga she grasped her head as if she was battling the most vicious of migraines, called for Alco, and then made the decision to ball all Japanese teas, to ban all Japanese teas from this mansion. To ball oh. and Japanese teas. Ball. I, 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 listen. It'd be like ban that. It, ban it all be right ball. next to each other. I, listen. <laughs> I read it, I was gonna read it as, like, ball up all the Japanese teas and, like, throw them away. Like a ball oh. harbor type thing. That isn't what they meant. <laughs> no. No, it was not. <laughs> By some miracle, Alko managed to negotiate and keep Sojiro's privileges to bear, to barely tea during the summer. To barley tea. What the, the fuck is a barley? To barley? To barley? I don't think it's barley. Oh, it's a barley tea. Oh, to uh, to a kind of tea. Barley is not a verb. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a type of tea. I know that it's a type of tea, but I don't know what a barley is. Like, what kind of plant that is. Fair. I mean, it's grain, right? I don't know. Barley, a member of the grass family, is a major. Yeah, it's a cereal. It's a cereal grain. Um. Oh, great. <laughs> Cereal grain tea. <laughs> That's all he gets is cereal grain tea. <laughs> Jesus. That's all he deserves. <laughs> Even the British only drank green tea at first, you know. Alko had clearly hit a so, nerve with this argument. Wh why? Why was she so angry that he was drinking tea? She's a tea snob. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of it. She's just I a still tea love snob. her. Alko stared at Alice, barely certain why she was so taken aback by Sojiro's actions. <sighs> I don't get why it's such a big deal. 
Tea's good no matter what kind it is. Sojiro grumbled to himself while sipping his hot green tea. He's drinking hot leaf juice. Hot leaf juice. He didn't realize that Alice was upset because he had poured his green tea into a teacup meant for black tea. In Sojiro's defense, this was the only teacup that Alice had given him permission to use. At any rate, the early morning was his, was his to enjoy. This was his moment to relax with the Japanese tea set he... The Japanese tea set he'd smuggled in. <laughs> he didn't use this time to read books or watch TV. He just drank his tea and gazed fondly at the garden, or rather the dense woods outside. Sojuro simply sat, relaxed, and let his mind wander. About an hour passed. Just as he was beginning to feel refreshed, he heard sounds coming from the foyer. He knew it was Alco and Alice talking, so he rushed to hide his teacup, teapot, and tea leaves in the kitchen. <laughs> of course. Like, oh shit! Oh crap! Oh crap! <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Hiding this contraband was easy enough, considering just how many unused shelves there were in the kitchen. Sojuro was perturbed by how they wasted the potential of such a splendid kitchen. Oh, you're burly, Sojuro. Alko spoke as she took off her white down jacket. Next to her, Alice silently took off her black coat. Nah, I just got home, actually. Started working the late shift at a food factory over in Ab Over in Amagahama. 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 I'm... 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 Over in A. <laughs> over in... Sojiro stuck his head out from the kitchen and gestured that he was about to put on some water to boil. Totally hasn't already boiled some water for himself. Alice tilted her head slightly at him. It wasn't that she thought his gesturing was funny or anything like that. Amagi Hamakara. Amagihama? Alice glanced up at the clock in the drawing room, and her expression darkened. What's wrong, Alice? Alko asked this from her comfortable seat on the sofa. She's, she's doing transportation math. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Alice responded indifferently before finally sitting down as well. Sojuro! Sato wa ippai dake da kara ne! Sojuro! 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 Just one spoon of sugar, remember? Alko yelled her matter of course response into the kitchen. Request. Fuck. <laughs> Reading is not my strong suit today. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, but it'd be like that. It'd be like Sojiro. that. Sojiro. <laughs> Sojiro didn't respond, but it was an affirmative silence. What's the difference between an unaffirmative and an affirmative silence? Good question. The world may never know. Uh -huh. <laughs> this was the result of two entire nights worth of cramming that Alice knew nothing about. What about you, Alice? I'll just have mine with milk. Alice responded out of obligation. Tea with milk. Got it. Yeah, whole milk. 
milk. Mm. With some milk. Whole milk. Oh, Whole I milk. still love Alice. For some reason, Sojiro dutifully answered Alice's request. Ma, yeah, but I just want to get the kid on the line. I get sick of, it, sick of his voice and reply every time, anyway. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, isn't it pretty rare for you to be drinking tea from a tea bag, Alice? You got a Sundari and a Coonberry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and an idiot. <laughs> and an idiot. Today is tired. Sometimes. And a I'm fucking dumbass who gets changed <laughs> in the middle of the hall. Of course. Listen, he saw some lady panties and got nervous. <laughs> he couldn't be in there. In the, he couldn't be in the same proximity of it. <laughs> it spooked him. That's what I took away from that. Head empty. There's not a thought I, in his head. There isn't. I'm no. just tired today. I thought I might as well. No thoughts behind those eyes. They're like giant fishbowl eyes. <laughs> it seems she'd allowed herself to accept another's kindness. At least for today. Hmm. Well, it's okay. Sojiro. Sojiro. More importantly, Sojiro. Anta, you didn't say something weird Did you say something weird earlier? Huh? I don't think so. So? Nara in the kettle. Oh, I could have sworn you said something. The two were conversing over a distance of four yards. <laughs> oh, I could have sworn you said something. Oh my god. <clears throat> Alice decided to add her opinion to the conversation. I don't think a day has ever gone by when he hasn't said something weird, to be honest. Her quiet tone was luckily just low enough that Sojiro couldn't hear her from the kitchen. I agree, but seriously, wasn't he talking kind of strangely just now? I don't そうね。会話自体は普通だったけれど、<笑><笑> Okay, I finally realized that this music reminds me of it reminds me of Freddy Fish. Oh my god. It does though. Like with, like, fair though. With like the um the metal oh I can't think of what it's called, but like the metal drum, I think is what it's called. Like, um what is it? It's it's a it's usually it's used in like renge and stuff like that. But like you you can hear it, like the little metal drum. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but that thing, and that reminded me of Freddy Fish. <laughs> it's mostly the metal drum. <laughs> and reggae, right? I believe so. And reggae? The steel pan? Steel pan! Yeah! Metal drum, steel pan. Oh, that was close enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, close enough. It's fine. Everything's alright. Anyways. <laughs> What are you guys talking about? I literally just said I started a new part-time job. That's all. Don't be another weird about one? it. Don't be weird about it. Why did you start another part-time job? <laughs> so, Jero, darling, I know that money is great and you love it. Can we not? Like, don't run yourself into the ground, all right? Oh, an eraser yourself. cannot grow back. An eraser cannot grow back. You can't be doing this. My love, my darling, my sweet baby boy. I'm gonna need you to not. It's time to stop. <laughs> <sighs> but 
I'm very vibing with this music. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> he, he put the cups down on the back on the black table. That doesn't look black though. It looks pretty brown to me. <laughs> yeah. On the black table without making even the slightest sound. He's learning. <laughs> Alice couldn't complain about how proper his job as a waiter had made him. Okay. I guess so, but uh, fair enough. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> While she didn't say anything out loud, she did nod to in his direction to so show some gratitude. I'll go, however. Amagihama, Dokke. あそこってスタジアムがあるところでしょ。ツアーの会場になるから、ここに行くけど。Was it? There's a huge stadium over there that I go to sometimes when a band I like is in town. Is on tour. The student council president, a supposed model student, loved rock bands. That's why she has a two types of guitars in her room, probably. Right. <laughs> Algo was secretly obsessed with a number of bands and used to travel way out of town just to see them perform live when she was in middle school. <laughs> of course, this was a world that Sojiro was far from familiar with. What? Wait? What is a stadium? What's a rock band? What's music? What's <laughs> music? <laughs> Anyways, I can't believe you, you, you've started yet another part-time job. What are you trying to accomplish working that hard, Sojiro? Uh, accounting for inflation. What? But I don't know what it is, but it's bad. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, why are you putting more money aside for it? He's like yeah. Mr. Krabs, he keeps all of his money in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> God. Ah, <laughs> ah, yeah, we're listening. Well, I have to work more because there are a couple of people in my life who like to take all my money from me for every little thing you can imagine. <laughs> I wonder who those people are. This was as much resistance as Sojiro was able to give. Ako lifted her teacup to her mouth as she was completely as if she was completely oblivious to Sojiro's monologue. <laughs> so it Sounds rough. That's rough, buddy. Sounds rough, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, hope you get better. <laughs> Alice said this as she set her key to her teacup down quietly. There were some things she just did not understand. Algo had had to hold back her laughter as she looked at Alice and Sojiro. <sighs> I should have known better than say anything. Eh. Sojiro's shoulders fell as he said this. He took a sip of his black tea, still unsure about the taste. Yeah, as long as you know I'm working a lot, I guess that's fine. So that means I'll also be away during the night, at night during winter vacation. I have to take those pills to work, though. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm done with those. They were a pain to make, and I found something more suitable for you anyway. We're going to tattoo a seal onto you, and if you misbehave, it's going to send a shock up your spine <laughs> every time. <laughs> and if it shocks you too many times, it's just going to snap your spine and kill you. Elko had a huge, ominous grin on her face. She put her hand into her jacket pocket and pulled out a little paper bag. It was a small, circular object, about twenty inches in diameter, wrapped up nicely like a present. Hi. 
これは入居祝いこれからはそれをつけておくのよ掃除をそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろそうじろアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコアオコ気に入った So, what do you think? Alka was clearly a little crazy. At least she wasn't totally serious. It was obvious that it was at least half a prank to just see how Sojiro would react. I, there's a solid chance he just kind of puts it on, anyways. <laughs> There's a, I feel like, okay, there's two, in my, in my personal opinion, there are two ways this is going to go. Either he's going to put it on to be like, all right, as long as I just don't, as long as I don't die, or he's going to go, no, I can't, because I need to cover my neck with these bandages. Fair. Fuck you. So, like, <laughs> it's going to be one of the two. But. Sojiro was solemnly considering the collar he had just been gifted. I'm not exactly what, sure what this means, but it's the first time anyone has ever given me something like this. I would hope so. He actually sounded like this would be a happy memory for him. Alice narrowed her eyes as what was, at what was transpiring. But what exactly am I supposed to use this for? To wear it if he stepped out of line. Though this you wear around your neck, like a dog collar. So Jiro grimaced when he finally understood Alko's mean spirited gift. He really wanted to ask her what kind of person comes up with such an evil idea. So basically, if I divulge any secrets or disobey you, then that child will choke me. Is that right? Are you sure you're feeling well, Azaki? Oh, do you not like it? I tried to pick out what I thought would suit you best. I love that expression. <laughs> no, there's just one. I thought there was two. <laughs> Alko still had an evil grin on her face. But Sojuro had a surprising response to this gift. Had a surprising response to this gift that Alko had clearly gotten as a prank. Hmm. I guess you're right. I mean, it's better than taking poison every day, and the belt itself looks well made. I actually like it. Thanks, Aozaki. He spoke 100% truthfully. Because he's just that kind of boy. Aku's face con contorted in disbelief. And she could only... Contorted? She con contorted? Oh. Contorted in disbelief. And she could only mumble if he was serious. I'm happy about any act of kindness. Even more so when it's from you, Aozaki. And with that, Sojuro put, on, put the belt around his neck. He placed it over the bandages already there. Hmm. I guess it works. It's a little tight, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. This guy has nothing going on up there, does he? No, no, he really doesn't. When we say there's no thoughts behind that, those eyes, we mean it. 
Despite his words to the contrary, Sojiro tugged at the belt uncomfortably and adjusted it. It was such a perverse scene that even Alka's face was red as a beet, even though this had all been her idea. And Alice just slowly gets the camera. <laughs> <laughs> just, it just slowly, like, rises. Perhaps it was because it gave her such a clear reminder of the scars she'd seen the day before. <gasps> okay. Oh my god, it, he's actually, he actually has it on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. He actually changed the sprite for it. I love him. <laughs> okay. Is it all right? I love him. I love him so much. <clears throat> Alka retreated guilty. Yes, Alka retreated guilty as Sojiro came closer to her to check the fit of his new collar. <sighs> if you don't say anything, how will I know if it fits right? His face! Yeah. It's okay. I'll just ask Alice. Look at him. The real face. Sojiro shifted his gaze from Alko to Alice. Alice stared intently at Sojiro wearing his new collar and said, Punk rock, hmm? Alko, stop trying to dress him how you want him to look. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, her hand is so baby tiny. Fair. She could not have put it any more bluntly. Yeah, Shut up! That's not what I'm trying to do! Just ignore her. From now on, I call her Lucy's pills as I'm giving you. Alka was oddly emphatic as she spoke before stomping off towards the hallway. Dude, I just got a notification that says that my heart rate is above 120. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what uh, Are you okay? You good? I don't know. <laughs> you good? D &D? I guess I'm I guess I'm excited about Witch on the Holy Night and well, the well, well, being did, adorable, did you... but I don't did, Dude put on a collar it... and immediately her heart rate <laughs> spiked. <laughs> I was excited. <laughs> Maybe B's the one who's into some weird shit. I mean I'm not gonna finish that. <laughs> no, you gotta finish it. Yeah. Okay, I I mean I took the BDSM quiz. I mean I know. Oh, good lord. I also know. I we all did. I think. I didn't take it. What do you mean we all took it? I didn't do shit. Coward. Coward. I don't. Did Keith take it? I don't think so. Exactly. See, I'm not the only one. Fine. Cowards. I don't think I was even Anyways. here when you did that. No, you were in the call for it. I know that. Oh, okay. Well, then, I don't know. Uh, okay. Anyways, cowards. <clears throat> I'm going to go take a nap until lunch. If you wake me up for any stupid reason, I will murder you. I'll go slam the door behind her as she left the drawing room. Sojiro stared in amusement and amazement, both at the same time. Fair. <laughs> I'll never understand why she gets so mad like that all of a sudden. Feel you, baby. He murmured to himself, forgetting that Alice was standing right there in front of him. I assume because her ill intent doesn't seem to get through to you. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Yeah, can you imagine you were out walking and she bought it being like, oh my god, this is gonna be the funniest joke ever. And then they get home and she's like, I have unlocked new things about myself and I need to go take a cold shower. <laughs> That's how that went. <laughs> Ill and ten. What? Just now? 
Silas looked up at, at Sojuru's innocent response. Yes, just now. There was a glimmer in her eyes that showed surprise at her current actions. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. With that terse reply, a she terse? returned. Terse? Terse. With that <laughs> terse reply, she returned to her usual expressionless self. There was no use explaining Alko's feelings. Because Alko doesn't even fucking understand them. Clearly. Real. Alko bought the collar for the sole purpose of annoying Sojuro and causing mischief. When things didn't turn out how she'd planned, her conscience got the better of her. Sojuro mistakenly thought that Alko was angry at him, when in reality, she was only angry at herself. Alice didn't bother telling Sojuro all these heartwarming details, though. Not because it was too much work, just because she had she was never one to have meaningless conversations. That was how she had been raised. Shizuki-kun, what do So, what are your plans for the rest of the day, Suzuki? Alice suddenly changed the topic. Sojuro thought for a while before replying. I'm just gonna relax until the evening. I've been way too busy recently. I wanna watch some TV here now, since we have to wake up Aozaki at lunchtime, right? right? Just keep it quiet, then. Alice let out a gentle sigh and rose to her feet. Just to keep it quiet. So Jodo would understand exactly what she meant by those words in just a few minutes. What? Hmm? That's ominous. The sun shining through the windows was bright. It was just about nine o'clock, about time for the morning television program to get going. Sojuro was sitting on the sofa, staring out the window at the scene outside. The view from the neighboring from the neighboring Sanryu showed a courtyard in a state of disarray or disrepair. Mm, the kind of same thing. Sojuro could could appreciate the outdoors in both its natural, wild state, and when tamed by human hands. Hmm. I really need to do something about that sometime soon. Gardener Sojuro? Gardener Sojuro? Sojuro muttered to himself, turning another page in his textbook. On the table before him was a mathematics textbook and a notebook with Alko's name on it. Although at first glance he appeared to be a diligent student studying every on his day off, he was in truth only doing so as a compromise. An eraser. Yes, it is. Tombow. Mono. Tombow. Plastic eraser. Plastic eraser. Wow. And then words in Japanese that I don't know how to read. Same. <laughs> He had given up on his main intent of watching the morning television shows. Oh damn, no PBS Kids? SMH. No, no Arthur? No Arthur. Damn. No, no Fetch with Ruff Ruffman? <laughs> <laughs> the reason why he'd given, he'd gave up was simple. He was being considerate of Alice, who sat in front of him with her nose buried in the book. Instead of holding herself up in her room, she bought out her old dusty book to read. This is what she meant when she had said to keep quiet. Sojuro found it difficult to turn on the TV. I guess I won't be watching TV for a while. Sanny. Sanny! 
With that decided, Sojuro resigned himself to reviewing some of the of the practice problems he'd gotten wrong. In the drawing room, for some reason, there wasn't any particular purpose in doing it there, but he also had no real reason to study back up in his room. And so there he was, leisurely highlighting his textbook with Alex- with Alex? Alex? <laughs> with Alice there in the same room. <laughs> to Sojuro, there really was no difference between his room and the attic and the drawing room with Alice. To be fair, he could probably live with a tiger as long as it didn't cause any trouble. See? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, Shiro has to deal with Taiga. I don't really know which one would be better for him. <laughs> yeah, with Marco. That was both Sojuro's biggest strength and his <laughs> biggest weakness. Fair though. Jaguar man. <laughs> Jaguar man. Dude. You know what I think is interesting? Speaking of. Speaking of animals and such, I always think it's interesting that werewolf is one word, but every other were creature has a hyphen. Hmm. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it without, uh, without the hyphen. I think in the monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, it's all, yeah, uh, it's all one word as well. Stuff like were boar, were rat, were tiger, uh. Yeah, but a lot of times, like, they make you put a hyphen in it, like, when you have to, like, write. Yeah. Like, I, when I was doing a, I did, I, for high school, I wrote the beginning chapters of a book I wanted to actually write. Um, and I still have them. Uh, but the, one of the uh, adopted parents of the main character, he, or she, she was from India, and she had, she used to have a protector who was a were tiger, but my um, English or like the person who like my teacher who like was going over it um, said that me putting were tiger as one word was incorrect. I had to put a hyphen. I was like, that does that's stupid. <laughs> I think it's stupid. If werewolf can be one word, all other were creatures can be were one word. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And that's all I have to say. This was very that. random and out of nowhere. Yeah, well, it's fine. <laughs> Before he knew it, the clock was showing 11. He spent two hours doing his math problems, but wasn't even halfway finished. He's, he's slowly learning. More than that, he was disappointed in himself for lacking the courage to speak up at all. In comparison, Aozaki is really working hard. Yeah, being dead ass asleep. <laughs> he propped his mechanical pencil onto the notebook and watched it roll away. He knew that Alco and Alice were busy with something since final exams had opened. He also knew that she had hardly gotten any sleep recently. If she had been able to ignore him during exams, she probably would have had an easier time. Today's nap was probably the first proper sleep Alko had gotten in days. Though she showed no signs of exhaustion despite the fact that she must have hit a peak long ago, she always seemed raring to go. Hey, that rhyme. Wow. It wasn't that she was trying to act tough. It was just that kind of, it was just the kind of person she was. Although, po always positive, always tough as nails. And that was exactly why she came off as completely irrational at times. She's losing it. <laughs> she's, she's going a little walker a little walkie just, just a just a little walkie just a little just a little bonkers 
But if that was the case, you could probably describe Aris in exactly the same way. Sojuro couldn't help but feel a bit inadequate when she saw their single-minded focus on their goals. He'd been so preoccupied with adjusting to his new life that he neglected to think about what he was going to do with himself after. Thinking about this cast of gloomy clouds over his heart. Oh, thinking about this cast of gloomy cloud over his heart, okay. Yeah. He felt like he'd never find a clear purpose in life like Alco and Alice seemed to have. At least, not since he'd left the mountains. His old life was gone now, never to return. That's not true. He can go back to the mountains. Yeah, he could. He, he could just go back there. He he just needs to earn a GED first, <laughs> and then he can go back to the mountains and get attacked by more wild dogs. <laughs> Which I do not wish for the boy. Damn. Obviously, Sojuro fans do not come at me. I am one of you. <laughs> I am one of you. <laughs> he was like a kite cut from its string, destined to fly only where the wind took it. And without anything to ground him, he couldn't do anything about the empty future that lay ahead. He could only let himself fly where the currents took him, slowly losing sight of the ground below. There's all the conveniences you could ask for here, but nothing I truly desire. The town was full of options, but he could find but he could find nothing. Yes, I know, okay? Damn, heart rate. <laughs> Hold on, let me view my heart rate right now. Oh jeez. Let me see how it's doing. You know, it did this yesterday too, which was really weird. Oh no. Oh, currently we are at 108. Do you need to go to a doctor? Uh, nah, I'll be fine. Are you sure? Please don't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Please, please take care dying. of yourself. Please well, take no, care of yourself. I think the most interesting part is that I usually have a very low heart rate. <laughs> like, usually, like, in the 80s. <laughs> so for it to be like this, I'm like, oh, I must be, like, really excited about Witch on the Holy Night. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I promise I'm fine. Uh, he'd asked himself the same question time and time again. It never made him feel any better. If anything, it only made him feel worse and worse. That, or... Maybe he felt that lament, the lamenting, his own inept ineptitude, would lead to finding some kind of goal or desire someday. Huh. <sighs> Tired of his own sh sniveling, Sojuro dejectedly closed his notebook. When he looked up, he saw his own face reflected back at him in the TV screen. His new collar was there around his neck, looking as, as out of place as ever. I don't even see it. <laughs> I don't either. Perhaps a fool like him, who felt weak when faced with other strengths, did need, did need to wear a collar after all. Hmm. This is silly. I shouldn't worry about this until I'm actually an adult. You should get a collar extender. <laughs> If it's tight on him, you should just get an extender. Oh my god. 
Or like literally use string. You you think he knows what those are? <laughs> no, he doesn't know what a collar extender is, but I'm sure he knows what a ribbon or string is. Uh, fair enough, I guess. I would hope so. He should. I didn't read that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I messed pressed. It's fine. Uh, it's still there. He should. He shook off his thoughts of doom and gloom and sat up straight. After psyching himself up a little bit, he stood up from the sofa. Yes. Is he gonna go wake up? I'm gonna go make some food. You want anything, Alice? Sojiro asked casually. While Sojiro had been doing his own thing, he had remind, re remained mindful of Al Alice. Alice? Alwis. Alwis? Alice looked up, surprised at hearing her name. She had completely forgotten Sojiro was even there. What? What she? Me? Ah. Yeah, you. You've, been on you've only had tea all morning. If I'm gonna be taken, I may as well cook for everyone. Without waiting for a reply, Sojuro headed off to the kitchen while putting on his apron. Alice tried to wave him to stop, but by the time he'd already but by then he'd already disappeared into the kitchen. Look at her hand. It is so baby small. Small. It is a small hand. Snow. She was hesitant to walk all the way in there just to tell him she didn't need anything. And besides, she was actually hungry. She's hungry. Sojiro's proposal made sense, and her empty stomach agreed. Alice was hungry, and Sojiro was going to make lunch. Making lunch for both of them would save the time and trouble of cooking two separate meals. There was no logical there was no logical reason for Alice to refuse his gesture. She decided to stay quiet and tactfully accept his offer. Henrito. He's so strange. She whispered the words softly, not for anyone in particular to hear, but herself. The truth however, was, however, Alice had been in a bad mood all morning. Why, Alice? Tell. Damn. You share. After checking all of the sigils around Misaki City and boarding the first train back from... Tokawa? Tokawa. Yeah, Tokawa. All she wanted to do was spend the rest of her day reading until the words, until the words turned into a jumble. Her iron resolve to complete this task would not be interrupted by someone else milling about in the drawing room. This was her mansion, and there was no way she was going to lock herself up in her room on account of Sojourner. However, with that said, she knew it would be wrong to kick Sojourner out for no reason. As it stood, Sojiro had actually kept quiet like she'd asked. He wasn't in the wrong here. If Alice had really wanted to be alone, she should have gone to her room. I should have told him to leave and pick it alone instead of just telling him to be quiet. Alice had definitely stayed in the drawing room despite realizing the dilemma she'd put herself in. 
light. I'm stupid. You doing good, Becky? It'd be like that, yeah. There we go, yeah. Um, I was yawning, so I couldn't respond. Um. <laughs> you, you doing good? Yes. <laughs> she peek. You'll be peeking over her, over her book. Yes. She had figured Sajiro would eventually make a ruckus and run out to hide in his attic room. Her assumption could not have been more wrong. So Jiro never left the drawing room. Moreover, she had actually stopped caring that he was there. Though he hadn't paid her any attention, he hadn't ignored her either. They had simply sat in silence together without any real purpose. Alice felt the freedom of being alone along with the comfort someone being by her side. To put it into words, Sojiro was just that kind of person. He's just that guy. He's just that guy. He's just that dude. Mm -hmm. He's just doing his best. Yeah. That was probably the only reason Alice had been able to sleep so soundly with him there next to her. Sojiro continued cooking in the kitchen oblivious to the thoughts that went through Alice's head. She couldn't see him from the drawing room, but she could easily imagine him cooking in the kitchen. What do you think his apron says? Oh my god. Probably just has a big flower on it or something. Fair. It's like an old a tree. 60s style. There's <laughs> a tree. So like, but no, it's like an old 60s style where it has like the the circle, like the half circle. Oh, yeah. On yeah, the waist yeah. down, it's yeah, like yeah. the half circle with like the frills and the pleats. <laughs> I, I can see it. Like. <laughs> it's the 80s, and it'd be weird for that to be in the house. It was a pretty popular style even into the 80s. Mm -hmm. It's cute. Um, he really is strange. Alice, res Alice resumed reading after unwittingly starting her feelings. Stating her feelings out loud a second time. The sunlight beaming into the drawing room showed that it was noon. Time to wake up. Time to wake up, Akko. Oh boy. Oh boy. The sunlight actually looked warm, despite it being a cloudy winter day. Just as noon struck, Sojiro returned to the drawing room. Two sets of plates. Didn't make enough for Alco, damn. SMH. Some food of an indescribable color was piled on the large cream colored plates. What did he. <laughs> this... Oh. this is. Um. Oh. Oh. What is happening? Did you... What did he make, Alice? Oh no. Was this man cooking? What was this man cooking? I think it's probably just some kind of form of like soup or like curry. Something. Fair. Granted, they really don't eat that much. No, they don't. And it's not even like, it's probably not even like that high quality. No, it's, but it's probably like, it probably tastes delicious. Because Sojiro made it. <laughs> She hadn't expected much. And since she also hadn't requested anything, she could just refuse it if it was something she didn't want. But this food left her at a loss for words despite psyching herself up. What is this? Alice spoke as though she was terrified of what had been placed before her. Hmm? Huh? Ah, just put some stuff on top of the stir-fried udon noodles. <laughs> oh, oh god. If Alko had been there, she probably would have punched him. 
but Sojiro just confidently placed the two large plates on the table. Steam billowed from the mountain of food like an angry volcano ready to erupt at any moment. The thick mystery sauce flowed over the plates as, as magma might from, a, from side eruption. From said eruption. And below it all were a seemingly infinite number of slimy, tentacle-like noodles. I think she's really blowing this out of proportion. <laughs> <laughs> there was really nothing more to say about it. This was clearly the food of a poor, struggling student who favored quantity did of quality. Cook too, did Sojuro cook too hard? Oh god. Did he cook Honestly, too hard? I think she's blowing this out of proportion, especially considering they mostly just order out food. Fair. I don't really think she has any room to talk. They really do just order out food, and when they do cook, it's literally like freaking Nutella on bread. <laughs> yes. Or they make noodles, but they make, like, in a cup ramen. Yes. I think she's gonna eat this and love it, so... <laughs> And then they're going to make him make all of their food in the mornings and stuff. All that was required was a basic recipe. The will to cook something and what few ingredients were needed. The pile of stir-fried noodles with sauce slathered on top of the <laughs> top was so horrifically bad, it was almost an art form. This was a bachelor's cooking if she'd ever seen it. Is a bachelorette's cooking just ordering out Alice? <laughs> <laughs> there was really nothing else you could call it. <sighs> she had wondered what he was doing for an hour in there, and it turned out he had been making this sauce. If it takes an hour to make a sauce, then you better fucking appreciate it. <laughs> No sauce would have been fine, but Sojuro had wholeheartedly gone the extra mile. Sojuro bowed his head slightly and picked up his chopsticks. He had brought a fork to Alice. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, hold on. Let me, let me, let me just... Nope, okay. <laughs> It's quivering. How old are you for? I know. <laughs> she picked up the fork and stuck it into the noodle half. Hold on, sorry. She picked up the fork and stuck it into the noodles, half drowning it in sauce. Sojuro began eating not seeming to care that Alice sat there looking like she was about to eat poison. You mean like the stuff you've been forcing him to eat? <laughs> no. <sighs> Seeming to view this as a challenge, Alice furrowed her brow and slowly brought the mass of noodles to her mouth. It was a little salty and ugly to look at. But it didn't taste all that bad. If anything, it was actually pretty good. <laughs> no shit, Alice. <laughs> God damn it. I want to ask one thing, but... Alice, I swear. <sighs> Damn. Not gonna lie, it didn't look that bad either. I, I would have eaten it. <laughs> yeah, like, it I mean, I probably would have at least tried it. Fair, yeah. Anyways. So, <laughs> I want to ask you something. Sojuro put down his chopstick and chopsticks and turned to speak to Alice. It's there. What? The collar. Oh, it's there. It's oh, there. It's there. <gasps> you can see the little, little 
latch. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it. You can see the baby. <laughs> Be honest with me. Major not. Aozaki hasn't actually taken a life yet, has she? Alice looked up quietly at the sudden question. She had been inspecting Sojuro's meal, and now she looked straight up at him. That's a rather odd question, Suzuki. I nah, know. I hate to ask you, but it's not just something I feel comfortable asking Aozaki directly. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to. Alice didn't respond. Sotoro resumed eating, not seeming disappointed. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Ow. Oh. Alice started. Uh, Alice stared blankly at him, slurping his noodles. <laughs> Slurp. After much hesitation, she replied. No, just like you said, Aoko hasn't killed anyone yet. She has been involved in that sort. She's been involved in that sort of thing multiple times, though. Alice's response was slow and measured. Sojuro still looked troubled. But not at the conversation they were having. Rather, he looked apologetic towards Alice. He said she didn't have to answer if she didn't want to. But Alice kept talking, despite the fact that he, d despite the face he was making. That day, wow. Huh. No, I mean, technically, didn't she kill those cats? <laughs> uh, I don't think Alice knows about that, though. Well, probably not, but... <laughs> you know, I mean... Splitting hairs. <laughs> Sojuro silently yawned. Alice narrowed her eyes at him suspiciously. It almost seems like you knew all of this from the beginning. Sajuro? Cognizant of the things happening around him? No. Hmm. Imagine. Interesting. Imagine. Imagine, truly. Sojuro. No, not... Well... Maybe... She just says stuff like that sometimes. But it's never felt like she's ever actually killed anyone before. But more than that, I guess the best evidence is... The fact that you are still alive? Did it cut me? I said it. Oh, no, yeah, I did not hear it. Oh. <laughs> the fact that you are still alive? Sojuro chuckled at Alice's stellar response. Sojuro chuckled? You mean the Chaos Emeralds? <laughs> exactly. You mean the Chaos Emeralds? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was, Alco, where are my- where are the Chaos Emeralds? Super Sojuro. <laughs> You'll never find them. <laughs> 
Things would have been more clear, clean, clear cut the night, that night, if Alco had actually killed someone. Sojuro would have been dead before he even saw her place. For better or for worse, Alco remained inexperienced in spite of her ruthlessness and decisiveness. Sojuro relaxed his shoulders. His stern face gradually returned to its normal carefree state. Then... But even so, none of that really matters. That's just the way she is. She acts with reason and uses her knowledge to make up for any inexperience she might have. She could take another person like And with that, Alice went back to twirling noodles around her fork. She looks like she's having fun, Sojuro thought as he re as he ruminated over what she just said. She was rational enough to accept herself despite acting against society's morals, and possessed an intellect that exceeded even the confidence, even the confidence gained through experience. Had Alco been raised to utilize her logic and reason to, for, to forge reality from fiction? If that was the case, then perhaps they really were different from Sotro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, can you please not tell Aozaki that I asked you this? Sojuro seemed serious, as if he'd really regretted asking. Alice's expression remained unchanged, but she, but she had never intended on saying anything to Alko. They may be roommates, but they are not friends. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sure why, but I seem to have a lot of secret conversations with you. <laughs> They're buddies. Sozuro went back to eating his food. Though Alice had still only had a single bite, he was already scraping his claim. I heard I asked Aozaki this, but do, do you always get along like that? Mm? So Dredd suddenly decided to change the topic of conversation. His new topic was the rather cold and dry relationship between Alko and Alice. Alko said their relationship was normal, but maybe Alice had a different opinion. If you're talking about how we rarely talk to each other, that's just what happens. It's convenient. It isn't something that bothers us. Alice was still twirling noodles with her fork as she gave her conscious, her concise answer. Around and around the noodles went. But none made it into her mouth. <laughs> what do you mean, it's convenient? Do you mean that they're friends? Really don't seem like it to me. <laughs> Would it make things difficult for you if we didn't get along? So Jura swallowed his words at Alice's perplexed reply. It would, actually, but he wasn't sure how to respond when asked so directly. <sighs> no, maybe I was just thinking about it the wrong way. I promise I won't bring it up again, so forget I asked. More importantly, Alice. Sojuro gave Alice a piercing stare that was more intense than any time they'd talked before. 
This is that that is a much more serious expression from Sojo than I've ever seen. I think so, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 a very intense man. <laughs> Alice was taken slightly aback at the unusually intense look in his eyes. So were we. Oof. He's intense. His face became slightly f her face became slightly flushed out of nervousness. Nobody besides Alko had ever stared at her like this before. Whether or not he noticed, Sojiro waited a few moments before speaking slowly and with complete conviction. Sore. Tabenai nara hoshi. Sojiro, my love, my darling, sweetheart. Oh my god. Don't scare me like that. Oh my god. Oh, God. I I need a moment. I need a moment. I need a moment. Hold on. I just I just... <laughs> I'm half out of my chair currently. If you're not gonna eat that, do you mind if I have it? <laughs> oh my God, Sojiro, Sojiro Suzuki. Or, I do or, not have a middle name yet. Or or rather. Oh my God. If you're not gonna eat that, do you mind if I have it? I feel like his middle name would be Dazai. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's like the first name that came into my brain. <laughs> so for it to be Sojiro Dazai Suzuki. If, if it is, you called it. But like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's just going to be Sojiro Suzuki for the rest of the game. Well, no, I no, I know he doesn't have a middle name. Oh. That's the middle name I'm giving him. So that way, if I need to call his full name, his middle name is now Dazai. I, okay. Which is funny because in Bungo Stray Dogs, the character Dazai is voiced by Kai Chi Tang, who is Archer. So everything yes. just comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> everything is always full circle. Yes. So so Sojiro Dazai Suzuki, what the fuck? <laughs> um, an awkward silence followed. Wareikedo. Sorry, this is mine. <laughs> so she does want to eat it after all. All right, fine. Get fucked. <laughs> Suzuki had cooked it, sure, but Alice wasn't wrong. He had made it for her after all. All right. All he had to say. His... <laughs> all right. I'll... His eyes go all his eyes go all big and innocent again, and he's just like, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you didn't like it. Well, if you do, I'll make it for you again. <laughs> there was a slight tinge of anger in her voice, but even she wasn't sure why it was there. <laughs> ah, you're right. Uh, sorry, uh, I shouldn't have asked. Sojiro plopped himself down onto the sofa. What? <laughs> <laughs> This must have this must have looked particularly pathetic to Alice, since she responded with, "So no. Are there any ingredients left to cook some more?" She quickly covered her mouth. Apparently, she had surprised her even herself. I mean, they have to make some more for Alco. For Alco. I mean, she's gonna feel left out, and then she's gonna be mad. <laughs> it was quite unusual for her to have asked something like that. <sighs> nope. I used everything and made some for Alco as well. Sojiro stared a bit regretfully at Alice's plate as he responded, "No." <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go to the. We'll have to go to the market. Alice could have just let it go, but for some reason she felt the need to speak up again. But Alko is still sleeping. Yeah, but I'm gonna wake her up soon. And she told me she and she have told me to make her something anyway. Speaking of which, it's almost one o'clock. I'll go up and go and wake her up now. 
Maybe so. But I feel like if I don't wake, I don't wake her up now, she's gonna end up killing me later anyway. His words were surprisingly affectionate. Leaving Alice with only that, Sojuro headed to Alko's room. Alice watched him leave in silence before taking another bite of his stir-fried noodles. Glancing at the door to the hallway to make sure nobody was coming, she took another bite. <laughs> she repeated this process many times before finishing her food. It was then that she heard Alko's rap coming from the second floor. Alice stood up and began solemnly cleaning the table, feeling a bit sorry for what Sojuro was dealing with. She knew she didn't really have to, but she felt like it was the least she could do for him. <laughs> she never really expected to feel this way. But he cooked for her. And it was surprisingly good. Almost enough to make her forget how bad he was at making tea. Oh. New book added to the archives. Oh. Whoosh. Neat. Does that say scarred? Scarred, scar, red. That's a lot of scar. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's go into it. When are we seeing the green lady again? Oof. I want to see the green lady. Same. Like, where, where the fuck is she? Especially considering when I was looking up pictures, I now know who she is. I want to see her. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Because fuck the Type Moon bot spoiled it for me. God damn it, Type Moon bot. Nice and mage. <laughs> December, the month when even monks were busy at work. How long has it been fucking December? Good it's question. Been December this whole game. Hmm. But but Christmas hasn't happened yet, so we know it's still like mid December. Yeah, it's like mid. Uh, it's like mid, maybe even early December. Can't be. Well, it can't be early December. It has to be like yeah. It has to be like mid, maybe second, maybe end of second week of December, maybe third week. We we have to at least be in like the third week, I think. Yeah. Like it's gotta be Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it was the culmination of the year. Perhaps due to all the put off tasks that build up through the season, the month always seemed to pass by in the blink of an eye. It was a day like any other in December. Though none of them were any the wiser to what the others were doing, Alko, Alice, and Sojuro had spent the day attending to their own affairs. None. See, the fact that the title card is only now going away is ominous. That is very ominous, yeah, for sure. What is this? Suppressing the urge to murder someone, her terrifying voice boomed across the room. The sunroom was often used to dine in when the weather was nice, since it overlooked the, con the country, the courtyard. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was a room decorated with high-quality furniture and upholstery and an upholstery ben befitting an, a, 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 an historic. That shouldn't be an historic. That should just be a historic. <laughs> Western style mansion. The fusion of Chinese Chippendale. Chippendale. Yeah. I feel it's a type of wood. Ch -ch -ch Chippendale. Rescue, Rescue Rangers. Rangers. <laughs> Ch -ch Chippendale. 
Rescue me. Eight. The fusion of Chinese Chippendale aesthetics and traditional English Georgian elegance caused even Alco, a commoner, to think twice about doing anything unaristocratic on the grounds. Truthfully, she was sickened by the, fla the flagrant waste of money, but none of it was paid from out of her pocket, so she could have cared less what the purchasers spend spent their money on. Three unbelievably out-of-place offerings sat atop the lavish sunroom's table, as if enshrined. In stark Ooh. contrast to the room, they appeared they appeared like meals prepared by aliens. <laughs> Those are pretty plates too. Oh yeah, for sure. Egg noodle. Egg. Egg. Sojuro. Kore. Sojuro. Is this your idea of a practical joke? Alko's trembling fists clenched and unclenched as she questioned the one responsible for today's menu. The clock struck nine in the evening. The chef in charge nodded dutifully, eager to explain. This is a new product from my workplace. Kenomi said it looks it looks and tastes fake, but honestly, I think it's better than the real thing. Besides, they're only 40 yen each after the, after the company discount. A steal, right? Even with the egg on top, it's only 60 yen or so. So it's like six bucks? Six bucks, dang. The lackluster chef seemed pleased with himself as he boasted. Even lackluster is probably still better than what Alice and Alco eat. <laughs> right? Alco waited to grumble that the real steel was her appetite. <laughs> so, you got done, eh? Well, isn't that nice for you? Now, where's tonight's dinner? The chef thought for a second or two, then clapped his hands together in revelation. Ozaki, Ozaki, you know if you eat too much, you get fat. <laughs> Sojo, Sojo, darling, that is not the correct sentence. <laughs> darling. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a kick. So what you're telling me is this is Dinner? No complaints. I'm not making anything else. The two stood there, glaring at each other. Alko gave off an air that said she would rather die than eat his food. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't they order from his workplace? <laughs> I think I literally she, the both of them are just like babies. They're four year olds. <laughs> Real. They're like, no, we eat the same food every time. You brought something weird home and we're not gonna eat it. <laughs> God. Well Sojiro was convinced she would capulate eventually. She caught so confident, he even considered ch chitting? Chiding. Chiding? Yeah. Chiding her about being so picky. As usual, the two could not see eye to eye. Then there's Alice, who's like slurping it down already. <laughs> Real. So true. Yeah. No way. There's no way I'm eating. Whatever this is. Then go use your own to open it up. 
Oh, don't be such a spoiled princess. Sads, tonight's dinner only costs 200 yen for the three of us. Also, you don't live on the moon, so you can't be a princess. <laughs> Sojiro puffed out, puffed his chest out as he, as he, as his, had his penny pinching prowess. Penny <laughs> pinching prowess. I mean, considering they take most of his money, that feels about right. Yeah. Alice alternated her gaze between the two quarreling roommates and the strange food before her, which she had also never seen before. She she remained a mere bystander in all. I, I imagine she's doing the the um the eye tennis where it's like the 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 <laughs> her eyes go back and forth. <laughs> Aozaki, if we ate like you wanted with only 30,000 yen for food each month, I'm pretty sure we would all starve to death before you could heal me. <laughs> I mean, sure. The meat Alice cooked yesterday was really something. I was impressed the difference in quality in 700 yen per ounce. Even the 100% juice from the co-op made me rethink the idea of fresh food. But if we keep eating like we have the last three days, we'll go broke. So, uh, nah. Sojuro was making perfect sense for once. <laughs> this, you know what? You know what? This. This is the thumbnail. <laughs> we decided on like one so of, many things for the thumbnail. I love, I love got, Alice. One of, them, one of them. One of them will become the thumbnail. One of them. Alice is so good. So good. Fortunately, neither Alko nor Sojiro noticed the silent stare of, of disapproval coming from Alice. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. There should be more than a minute. to put more effort into hers for a change. With Alko's words, Alice closed her eyes. She might have been trying to quell her anger. <sighs> you astonish me, you know? How do you even get by before me? <laughs> we made it work. Besides, living life one step from starvation keeps you on your toes. Yeah, it also keeps you hungry. Her brazen response left him speechless. Through a story, though a story for another time, Sojourner remembered a warning from a certain vice president who was complaining about a certain president insistently bu bugging him to take her to lunch at the end of the month. Oh. <laughs> but that was neither here nor there. <laughs> That was then, and this is now. Where are those cookies That's the only reason I trusted you with today's meal. Out of everything, that's out of everything. That seemed to be what ate at Alco the most. The stir-fried yaki udon he made, he prepared previously had been very well received. And it even melted away Alko's morning grumpiness with just one bite. However, Sojiro had not seen fit to tell them that that is... Tell them that that is... That it was one of the only dishes in his limited repertoire. For a bachelor, the ability to cook is as close to a superpower as one could get. Fifteen years into the future would likely become a highly desirable trait. Regardless, that misunderstanding had led Alko and Alice to overestimate Sojiro's culinary talents. 
Her ire finally made sense to Sojiro. <sighs> All right. Fine. We can order in. There's nothing here to cook anyway. But only if you clear up. I'll go bast in her victory. It was then, after seeing Sojiro's face, as he went to fetch the delivery menu, Alko realized her misreading of him. What annoyed Alko most was the fact that such little effort was put into dinner. But to Sojiro, the dinner had, had not been about cutting corners, but rather about a meal he had legitimately wanted to try. Alko ruminated on how it could it could probably pass as food for someone raised in the mountains. See, it's moments like this where I'm like, I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, like well, but it's just, she, it's moments like this where she kind of pisses me off, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like, try the damn, try the damn food. Like, honestly, just try the damn food. I don't honestly like it, to be honest. I also love it. Oh my god. Nind then. Like, as simple- like, as simple as, like, ramen with an egg? I'd eat it. I mean, it- I'd probably eat so it a simple. lot, to be honest. <laughs> if it's simple, and if he can get it for 60 yen, or for 600 yen, a bop, I- I- I think that's pretty looking good. And now I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> honestly, after we find a good stopping point, um, I'm gonna make midnight noodles. Fair enough. <laughs> Probably. Alice, <laughs> Alice, what are you doing? She's eating the food. She's eating. <laughs> Alco knows Alice standing near the table, holding one of the bowls tightly. Oh my god, she's like, you're not taking this away from me. <laughs> Would you put that down already? I need to get this back to Sojiro so we can eat proper meals. A proper meal. Despite Alko's words, Alice stood her ground, firmly clutching the bowl. Oh my god. In fact, she seemed to be embracing it. Damn. This one is mine. Alice's faint voice drifted across the sunroom. And just like that, the night's menu had been decided by majority rule. Alko's shoulders sh sank in disappointment at her lot that, that evening. Come to think of it, Alice was already peculiar. It was already peculiar about things she, she deemed were hers. It was morning, and there were ten days left in December. Oh. Oh. Right. So it's the 21st? <laughs> There's 31 days in December, I think. Yes. While the rest of the city was preparing for Christmas festivities, Sojiro headed to his part-time job. Oh, which one? Mm. <laughs> <gasps> I fucking hope it's the goddamn pinball machine place oh my god so we can see the green lady though it looked though it looked like it could snow at any time the tree lined streets were bustling with people these days were peculiar or were particularly merry particularly that's what i said i said peculiarly and i said particularly oh okay i don't know Eng <laughs> listen Listen, English is hard. Even if my brain thought I said particularly, there's a very good chance I said peculiarly. <laughs> <laughs> Students on winter break spent their days hanging out with friends while they counted down the days until seasonal holidays, where they could all get their Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets. <laughs> a flashy banner for Christmas cakes. Huge advertisements adorning the building fronts. The station plaza bustling with pop-up stalls. The 
And among the crowd in the heavy, di- the heaving, heaving district, Sojiro stepped into a phone booth. Why? Safe from the winter wind, the inside seemed warm by comparison. The thought that it would actually be nice to have one in the mountains crossed his mind as he inserted a coin into the phone. He dialed a number from memory, his hand moving on its own. After about five seconds, the phone began to ring. Another five seconds... Another ring. Ten seconds had passed. He gazed through the window at the various signs and the surrounding buildings, and marveled at the sheer number of people out and about so early. The number he dialed was that of Tobimaru Tsukiji. The Tsukiji name was well known in Misaki, as a distinguished land o- la- land-owning family going back generations. I didn't know that land-owning was one word. <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> Incidentally, their residence was located in the neighboring town of Yashi- Yashirogi. The ringing fin- was finally replaced by the kind voice of an elderly woman. Oh, <clears throat> I'm ringing. After her, oh no, I don't even get to read. After her polite Damn. greeting, she handed over the phone to Sor- so- Sojiro's target. Damn. Ohayou, Tobimaru. <laughs> Morning, Tobimaru. Hi. Ohayou. Hey. Morning. It's so early, man. <laughs> <laughs> so why? I'm I'm still in bed. <laughs> he was still half asleep. Or so it sounded to Sojiro. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. <laughs> I need to ask you something. Do you have a second? I mean, I guess. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> Speak to the to the descendant of 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> sure, whatever, man. <laughs> His response did not exactly inspire confidence in Sojiro, but he cut right to the chase. Hmm. The vice president's pause was a long one. It was hard to read from this end of the receiver. This is what you wake me up for. <sighs> Listen here, Sojiro. If she's mad at you, take her out somewhere. Try to butter her up, show her a good time. If that doesn't do the trick, then cut her loose. What do you want me to say? <laughs> with the Peace. Peace. To- <laughs> Toby Maru hung up. Oh my god. Dude is dead tired. <laughs> He's just like, I do not have time for your girl problems. Deal with it yourself. Read a magazine. Good night. It's um, like, dude, I don't freaking know. Good morning. Good night. <laughs> It's it's six in the morning. I said good night. <laughs> ten. It may have been. Oh, it is ten in the morning. All right. Well, it may have been ten in the morning to Sojiro, but after dealing with what seemed like a six o'clock Toby Maru, all he could do was accept his advice. He could say all he liked about the guy's tone. But deep down, he knew that he knew that his advice was sound. All right, I think this is a good place to stop. All right. Because I'm hungry and I would like to make midnight noodles. Fair enough. <laughs>